it's like a free for all. So he sets up stalls, everyone shows what they've done, and you go around discussing it. So it's very organic, there's no rules, you just sort of go in and talk for two hours. And people are showing, there's a culture of people talking about this is what I've tried to do this year, and every single teacher is involved. This is great, it's one of the best sort of things we do every year. It creates this, it's, it's cultural, it promotes this cultural inquiry, so the content is also really, really interesting. Some of the things, so you know, these are just photographs, but I just sort of talk through them. So the bottom left here, it just a, it looks like a piece of paper to you, but that was two teachers working, talking about direct, um, where, when it's best to talk and when it's best not to talk. And they actually got students to give them feedback on a, on, on a period of working as an English teacher and a music teacher. And they were saying, you know, that when you explain that whole thing at the start, we didn't need to because you've already given us the materials. But actually, you didn't explain enough there. We needed you, you know, they, they were getting this interesting thing about teacher talk and where it's most appropriate and, um, and the nature of the talk. When can you just let us get on with it? When can you give us resources that we can just learn from independently? And when do we want you to tell us directly what the answers are? That was, that's really interesting. This is uh, an experiment with using Edmodo for Year 12 politics by giving them some resources to read and discuss online before the lesson. So at the end of the lesson, it was starting from where they'd already got to with their discussion. The one above is about learning by heart, so it's just an opportunity to sort of engage with some of the work from that thing I already explained. And then on the top left, it was a uh, poetry, Year 7, German, Poetry. So in year seven, learning <laughs> German poems by heart and translating them, um, writing poems in English, then translating them and, and learning that by heart. It's an amazing project. Getting kids in, in year seven to uh, learn German by heart and recite it. Incredible, really. And very ambitious, very, very interesting. These are two other ones. Um, some students using Irish to improve behavior management. They, 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 they felt that the systems were the issue. Was there? themselves, they were very self-critical, it's fantastic, they reported this whole thing about the repertoire, the gestural and postural repertoire, <laughs> the, way it's the language, that they, they, they observed that in themselves, the way they stood and the way they gesticulated was having an impact on their lessons and they videoed themselves several times. The biology teacher experimented with the start of the topic, take a couple of lessons where people are doing stuff and then one-to-one -one talk through. And, and see if that makes a difference. And they evaluated it with tests and with student feedback. Again, very interesting. Just for maths, there's a ma head of maths that's constantly developing his own flip learning videos, top right there, and seeing what, how good they are. He's really, he's honing in. He doesn't, he's not a convert to flip learning, but he thinks if I make the right videos for the right class, it will make a difference. And he's trying to find out when that is most effective. And he's getting closer, he thinks, to, yeah, that really saved me loads of time. Because those, up to that level, that accelerates the learning, but that stuff is just a waste of time. So, this one here, the bottom right, was one of the most interesting. It was a maths department realised that the reason that they, where they felt weakest was in their actual subject knowledge. So they identified maths modules at A-level that they were least confident in between them and taught each other um, the maths content. They planned resources together, they observed each other teach uh, on those modules and at the end of it they were saying it was the best CPD they'd ever done because they felt more confident in their maths knowledge, taught the lessons better and they felt that was really fantastic. But this was an option, they had to do this. It was really good. So there's lots of different things going on. Another feature of, the, of it is that we started this this year, uh, that lesson study, uh, we started doing this, it's become like a big thing. And at the end, the N10, um, <laughs> well as joining it, I'm always getting emails several times, um, well, about once a week, someone says, is N10 worth the money? And I always say yes, you know, it's, it is, that's the answer. Um, you get good resources, it's a great organisation, and lesson study is really powerful. They're not the only people that do it, but it helps. And they encourage you to look at the data and how you know how well you'll do it is really part of the discussion. And you start thinking about how do we know? How are we going to look it up? It can be qualitative, it can be quantitative, it won't be an order. <coughs> this is the one I was involved with earlier this year, science lesson where two of now I was taking photographs, but there's three of us with science teachers, real teachers, class, we planned the lesson together, we watched it, we did you know, one of the teachers was delivering it, and we learned so much, it was absolutely fantastic. We found, for example, this boy here on the bottom right, bottom left. 
this idea of passengers that weren't groups of three were rubbish compared with groups of two. Because look at him, he, he even said, we interviewed him after, he just said, his own words, he just said, he just felt like a passenger. You know, and sure enough, he's, the, you know, he's, he's not the strongest student in the group, so he opted out. All these behaviours, we saw so many things to do with measurement, and then the critical moment, you're there watching the measuring going on. Probably about the way the lesson and instructions were given, the kids who basically didn't read the instructions, or listen, or both, and it was fascinating. This was an economics one I won't go into, but we did an economics essay where they were using a sample essay to improve their essay writing uh, using a mark scheme and some feedback from students about it. So, we've also got involved in this framework within 10, I won't go through that, but it's, we just found it incredibly powerful to tell us, are we as good as we'd like to think we are about CPD? Um, and the review they come with, there's someone coming who does this audit with the screen. So there we go. I mean, uh, research engaged culture has lots of different things. You've got to get the basics right and keep the rest of the perspective. It is all about the basics being good. <coughs> That's an important thing. You can't do all this if you're still grading lessons, I'd say. If you're still grading lessons and obsessing about that, then until you drop that, forget about the rest, because you're just not doing it properly. Um, <laughs> you can't be intelligent about evidence if you're still grading lessons. It's an endless Separating engaging in research and with it. Try and do both, but at least do one of them really well. And then this whole thing about seeing this whole process as CPD culture being the main way of trying to improve the school and focusing on the individuals and the teams that they're in at the same time. There we go, thank you. And then it's lunchtime. Everyone's hungry. We've got one at the front. Yeah. Do you want to use the microphone? Sure. Okay. Um, just interested in this, your point about knowing your staff and, and yeah. knowing their strengths and their areas for development. And obviously, good heads, good heads should. Um, so, just thinking about if you're a new head, or for example, moving to a second headship, say. It's strange you should say that. Yeah. 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 Well, Who they should be concerned about, who are the yeah. champions they should be stretching, and any thoughts about that for new heads and new things? Yeah, well, I know, I'm starting a new headship in September, and I'm going to do what I did in this, in this job. Um, I, personally, I, I think need to, what I did in my first term in my current school was I, I met everybody in the first term. By Christmas, I'd met everybody. I also observed every single teacher teach myself. So by Christmas, I could, I knew, you know, I had some information about the context, that, and I, I, there was no judgment, there was no paper, I walked in, you know, nothing, just to watch a lesson, sample their environment, and talk to them about their lesson afterwards, and get them to tell me what their feelings were about their teaching. So absorbing this ephemeral kind of information as quickly as possible seemed to be the, the way to do it. And it, it, it worked, but I feel like I, that was useful. But you've also got to make sure that you're updating that. If you just think, oh, I saw that teacher teach four years ago, that's them. That's not right, you've got to look at that. And you and could then, have seen on a bad day. Exactly, Take yeah. Time, so, the new head is in there. Yeah, of course, so all of those things. And then, so I, that's very helpful. And, and things like, you know, learning walks and all that sort of stuff. And you do gradually pick things up. But I do think, what I found has been useful to go on a journey with is educating governments, for example, to believe us when we say uh, you know, what's good and bad with this department to review without the data. I want that. I get the message across that the complexity of the, what I'm telling you is, the, is closer to the truth than any representation that I could give you on the, on, in data. You might like the data, you might think that's more secure, but it's less accurate what, than what I'm telling you in this complicated way. And that's a, that's a subtle message to give, but I think, and it's the same with departments. The way you look at the, so a new head will get the most recent set of exam results. How you interrogate that is really critical. Do you start 
using shallow sort of data measures to say that teacher therefore is like this or that? Or do you start just asking questions about, you know, what's the reason and getting them to tell you and how are we going to improve that? Is that something we can work on? And is there a teacher factor in there at all? You know, all these questions, as long as you're asking questions rather than assuming things, I think that's it. <coughs> But it's, you know, and you do need, honestly, I mean, I, I've been working in a school with lots of very capable people, so um, I don't know what it would be like to find that that wasn't really true, uh, and, you know, to have massive deficits in the senior leadership to worry about, but that's, and, you know, that's, that does happen. Anyway, uh, I assume we've seen hungry people. Yeah. <laughs> to know whether you've had any influence with your primary feeders in terms of the culture at your school or I, I, I mean, you know, the primary school who have that research less culture embedded by effect. Not so much actually. And I, and I think I think one of the problems there is that um, although well, well I do know that a couple of schools that we work with they do have quite a good system around subject specific work. But it's quite hard. I mean, you've got lots of atomized people there, you know, the year five science curriculum, and you're the only person doing that. That's pretty tough. So what we were looking at is two schools coming together more and, and saying, you know, you need to have people talking the same about the same issues. It works better about with... Because sometimes it's the detail of the planning of all of that. So shared planning. I mean, the best, the best practice I know of in primaries is where that sort of joint planning is, is done by you know, lots of different people and it's owned. But no, I don't, I don't know of a similar research-engaged culture in another primary school that I can talk about. Do you think there'd be capacity to invite primary teachers into your... Well, yeah, that's the next thing. I, I've just been softening my stuff up. We did a thing just before that last marketplace, the day before, where some people had showed their stuff to some invited people. And it went really well, and they were really positive about it. So I'm thinking next year we would make that much more open. But it is, it is, there is a need for it to be an, an internal event for us, but uh, to invite others to, to share. I think that could grow, definitely. I mean, I, I, like, I like to think that would happen. Yeah, but I, if an individual wants to ask me a question, I'll stay behind. But I think with lunch, we should probably stop. Yeah? Okay, thank you very much.